plus two welcome to snickerdoodle stitch my name is kathleen and this is a channel about cross stitch so i've got lots of fun stuff to show you this time i have nine ffos a start which i also finished and then some whips in progress so i felt like i didn't get a lot of stitching done over the last two weeks well, it's really been about a week and a half it's wednesday night i'm filming this early i'm not going to get a chance to edit it until later in the week but i'm going to be going away tomorrow after work um, just for two nights and going away. So, um, wanted to get this, this filmed early. So I'm short a couple days from what I would normally have. And then I just had a like one on. So, um, I was a little more focused on FFOs and some sewing projects. I'm actually taking a quilting class this Friday. That's why I'm going out of town. So a couple evenings I just spent cutting some fabric that I was going to need for that. Um, and then last weekend, I'm one of a team of three who was coordinating our company. I'll call it summer event. It used to be a picnic, but the company is too big. There aren't a lot of venues that can accommodate a thousand people. Um, so we had a summer event. It was like an indoor barbecue, lots of activities for kids. And because the employees come and they are like, they're invited to bring their families along. So that was a lot of work. That was last Saturday all day. Um, we had to get there at eight to start set up for the event that started at one. Didn't get home until late. And then Sunday, I was really just exhausted and I did go visit my dad, but um, I didn't get a whole lot done last weekend with that going on. So, but I did, when I went to pull stuff or I was looking at stuff that I had been sitting in here all week, I realized that I did get quite a bit accomplished, even though I didn't feel like I stitched a lot. Cause, there were several evenings where I got no stitching done and that's not normal for me to have a day with no stitching at all, but I had multiple days with no stitching. But I got lots of FFOs, so let me dive into those and show you what I've been up to. So you all know I finished the um, Stacy Nash Animal Crackers bobbin because I collect mice. I've collected mice since I was a kid. I sort of fell into it by accident, but I love any kind of cute little mice. And I wanted to finish it very much like this with the bobbin. And I found the perfect bobbin that I had purchased some Riley Blake. Um, I didn't end up using the one that I had shown previously. It was a little bit bigger um, and it had bias tape on it. This actually had some kind of rickrack on it from Riley Blake. So anyway, it was a perfect size bobbin and I painted it red and I've got some white twine wrapped around for the thread and I'm so happy with the way he came out. He is actually in the bottom. I don't want to pull him out. He's glued in there. Um, in the bottom, he's stuffed. And in the bottom, I left just a little like quarter inch slit. And there is a part of a chopstick is what I have pushed up into. Yeah, it won't come off really easily. Um, is what I have pushed up into here. And then the other end of the chopstick I glued into the spool. So the only thing I didn't do, they had the thread on the sample actually through the needle. I'm not sure how well this thread is going to go through this. Uh, I think I used 36 count. Um, so I didn't do that. I think I'm just going to leave the thread wound around here or the, the jumbo size thread. It's in scale if you were really a mouse, right? Um, but really super happy with the way that turned out. I haven't decided where I'm going to put him yet. But um, yeah, the finishing was fairly easy. I just, that's actually a piece of vintage country mocha Ada on the back. I look, I was looking for some of the linen. I was going to put the same linen on the back. Um, but then when I went through some smaller scraps, I thought I had another piece of this linen cut that I was going to stitch something on and then I couldn't find it. So I may have had that, but then went ahead and stitched something different on it. It was Exude Designs Old Sheep and I didn't want to cut into the big piece that I have to cut out this tiny little thing. So I looked in my scraps of linen and this vintage country mocha Ada I think it's like 18 count Ada actually was a good color and it doesn't fray on the edges like linen wood. So as I was doing the stuffing and everything, I felt a little more secure with it. And I really just sewed around 
just went slow with my sewing machine. It's not perfect, but I love this. I'm just so happy with the way it turned out. So that's my finish of bobbin. And then my next finish, okay, these are, I'm gonna show a couple next that I finished the stitching a while ago, but I hadn't FFO'd them. This was the Val Stuff Cat, and it has little, it has fabric on the back. You see why it's puckered, which also has little cats on it. Um, I just cut a stocking shape and then put the ribbon on here and a little charm. And that the charm, I'll be honest, it's partly to disguise. I had put a dot of glue on the ribbon and it was showing through and I wasn't happy with that. And so I put the little snowflake charm on there, but he's all done. This little... Um, I don't have the curve quite right over here, but it's fine. <laughs> so that one got finished. It is just, it's not an open stocking. It's just the stocking shape. I traced around an ornament that I had. I just lined it up where I thought I wanted it on the cat and held it up to the light so I could see through to see that the cat and the stocking were lined up in there where I wanted. So I just traced around it. And then I do have some interfacing in, in here, some really lightweight interfacing just to give it a little bit of, um, sh so that it would hold its form and wasn't really floppy. And then this next one, this was a kit that I had bought at Needlework Extravaganza in New Jersey earlier this spring. And I had stitched the bunny up and I got it finished in the pillow. So I've got some, a sort of salmon-y pink um, gingham fabric for the background. This pink that's in here is kind of a salmon-y pink. And then I found in my stash of ribbon and stuff that I have still from my paper crafting that I had this really cute little, it's kind of a cross between rickrack and pom-poms. Um, it's sort of wanting to lie down flat instead of sticking out, but that's okay. So really happy with that. Um, this I plan on getting out at like Valentine's since it is holding the heart and then I'll probably leave it out through Easter because I'll roll right from Valentine's and snowmen into, into Easter stuff. So this will be out for a few months and you kind of can't tell. It's on a pale minty green, um, damask era. But, so that one got finished. My next finish is my chubby bee. So this is the Jeanette Douglas design. And I, ooh, okay, that is looking fluorescent yellow on screen. It's not quite so fluorescent yellow um, in person. It is yellow, but not fluorescent looking like that. So I had shown this, I had finished stitching chubby bee, and then these little hexagon pieces are in Michael's. They're 99 cents. They're in that, um, stuff that's up usually in front of the register. They have the bins with things that they used to all be a dollar, but now they're all different prices, but these are 99 cents and my 20% off coupon did work on it. So, um, 80 cents, I think is what it ended up with their like rounding how they do the 20% off. And so I just painted it yellow and then I cut out a mat board shape hexagon the right size. Now with my paper crafting, I do have die cutting machines. And so that's how I was able to cut out the hexagon that I wanted. You could just trace around the outside of the hexagon and then um, make your size, I don't know, probably about three quarters inch smaller on each side and it would fit. So wrapped my um, linen around the mat board and then that got glued in here. This is some chenille. I decided I wanted to go with the chenille, which is a little fuzzy, because I think of the bees as being fuzzy. They're not really fuzzy. Honeybees are not. Um, and then just put some put some ribbon up here. So that is all set. I am giving that to dad for Father's Day as part of his Father's Day gift, because my dad used to raise honeybees for many, many, many years. He raised honeybees. So I'm gonna give him that. Um, dad actually likes handcrafted things. So, um, yeah, that's what's gonna happen with that. I did buy another one of these shapes when last time I was in Michael's. Um, 
I went in for something completely different. And when I went up by the register, I noticed that they had replenished all these. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy another one of those hexies because that's just, it's a, it's a great um, finishing piece for small bee things. And I know I have a couple more small bee patterns. This next one, actually these two cotton pixels. One is Gardener's Cat. This was a pattern that just came out at market. And I showed it fully stitched. If I can get it to focus. Um, I showed it fully stitched last video, but it's finished. I put a little Bonnie and Camille fabric on the back. I don't know what line that's from. I have a ton of Bonnie and Camille fabric. I love their colors. They've got navies and reds and this green and some pinks and aquas. And I just love that there's some older lines that I have, but that's my, I decided not to do pom-poms or anything around it. Uh, no chenille or trim on the edges. I just wanted to leave it simple. So that's Gardener Cat. And then the little companion piece, Stitching Cat. <clears throat> so here's Stitching Cat all finished up and it's just a different piece of, yep, that's Bonnie and Camille as well. Um, I was digging through some 10 inch squares that I had of their fabric and just pulled a couple out. So that's how I ended up with the two. So I will put these in a bowl somewhere together. Um, when I got them fully finished, they were the first two things out of everything I'm showing today that got fully finished. And I just had them sitting in a bowl in my foyer area, just because that's where I put them to kind of keep them safe and everything and get them out of my way. And they were really cute there. So they may end up in that bowl. Um, and replacing what's in there now, but really happy with how this came out. And then I've got three more things. Hands-on design, gather wildflowers. I had shown these before when they were fully stitched, but now they are also FFO'd. And these are on these teak boards. So these used to be, and I don't know if they still have them, they were in Hobby Lobby in their spring shop. So the stuff that they put out for spring and they were typically in the aisle with like barbecue stuff and kit, like kitchen towels and they would have utensils and some weird things. And they had these little tiny round boards. I know they had them in, they had them in that section more than one year because I have three of these and I did not buy them all in the same year. And when they have like 40% off spring shop, it only makes these a couple dollars and I've had them knowing that I would put something round on them at some point. I looked recently when I was in Hobby Lobby just if just in the last two weeks because I have some stuff I'm going to show that I did get at Hobby Lobby um, to see if they had these since I've used two. I was like, eh, maybe I'll go ahead and buy another one. So I have two in stash, um, but I couldn't find them. So I don't know if they're already sold out or if they didn't have them this year. I didn't really get to look at the spring shop in Hobby Lobby this year. That's when I was dealing with health stuff and my surgery and everything. And so I really didn't get to Hobby Lobby since like back before Christmas, I think. But to finish these, they are just stretched around a round piece of mat board. Um, and to do that and not have any creases and get nice smooth circles, I did it like you would for quilting applique. So I took my piece, I rough cut the round shape bigger than, you know, like an inch all around, um, bigger than what I needed. And then I did a running stitch around the edge and then put my mat board down. And then you just pull the threads from your running stitch both ends so that it gathers and pulls around your round piece. And then you get a perfectly smooth round finished thing. The trickiest part is tying off those two threads then so that you keep your tension. It almost requires three hands, which I don't have. But um, I did that and then I did just glue it to the board. I didn't use a magnet or anything. Um, I think I actually used hot glue. And then this is a braided trim that I have around the edge that's just, uh, um, it's another like salmon-y pink and white and it matches the pink that's in the stitching. And then I took some silk ribbon and just put glued little bows on at the top. So really happy with the way those two turned out. I think bobbin and these two, 
are probably my favorite of the FFOs from this week. Although the last thing I have, I really like too, but. So these I will probably get out in the spring and leave out through the summer. Um, I know they're intended to be spring, but they're just very bright and cheery and they're summery too. That's when the flowers are blooming, right? They don't bloom in the spring around here. It's still frosting and stuff. Um, the last piece, this one, last time I showed it, it was not finished yet. I was still stitching on it, but I did finish the stitching and I got it FFO'd. So this was Shepherd's Bush Summer Notes. It was a kit that I bought when I was at um, Shepherd's Bush in April when I was in Utah. So I finished stitching it. So there it is with the stitching. It has little buttons, so the little flag on the flagpole is a button. Um, there's a little bee up here that's a button. And then some little flower center pieces are buttons. Let me cover my face so it will focus. So the little flag on the flagpole, which is hanging a bit crooked at the moment, and the bee that's in the S on summer, and then the blue flowers at the top, the little centers are buttons. And then down along the walkway of the house, there's three little teeny tiny buttons. Sewing those buttons on was probably the trickiest part of this entire piece. So the little tiny buttons are about an eighth of an inch wide. And to hold on to them and hold them in the spot where you want and to get the needle through the little hole uh, was a bit of a challenge. My fingernails probably weren't helping. And then this frame is just a frame from Michael's. Of course, I went through my stash and had nothing that I loved with this, but it's a four by six frame. So the finished piece really, um, there's maybe like a 16th of an inch more down here at the bottom. Otherwise it's an even margin all the way around. So the four by six frame was perfect. And I had in my head that I wanted something either this kind of brown or a blue that would work with it. Blue actually works better for me in my house. Um, and so I just went and started rooting through Marshall's and Marshall's had this frame. Um, and I think it was like $4.99 and is perfect. It was deep enough that I was actually able to put the finished piece in here and use the back that came with the frame. Um, and it can either be hung or just sit. So that's nice to have that option too. Sometimes I think I want to use something one way and then maybe something else comes along that I want to put in that spot. So now I want to hang it or don't want to hang it or so I like I like having the option for that. But I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And now I have my finished memento for my trip to Shepherd's Bush this spring. Uh, so now on to my whips. I have three. Actually, this one is a start and a finish, so it's not exactly a whip, but it's one that you haven't seen me stitch on before. And this I got at Pine Mountain, again, when I was in Salt Lake, but this was not, um, it's from Pine Needles is the shop, and then Pine Mountain is the, is the name that she markets her quilt and her cross stitch design center. But, so this was from Utah. It's a really cute little shop in West Jordan and they sell um, quilting things and cross stitch stuff. So this pattern is called Some See a Wish and it says Some See a Wish, Some See a, no, Some See a Weed, Some See a Wish. There's a tongue twister. Um, and I stitched this on an unknown scrap of blue fabric that I had. And I did not use all of the called for because the called for for these words was battalion blue, battalion gray, battalion something. It's weak style works. Um, I think it's just called battalion. Oh, battleship, battleship. That's the name of it. Um, and that wasn't going to show up on my blue fabric. So I substituted colors and most of them were from... When I was at Needlework Extravaganza, I bought some packages of floss that were general arts, but they were labeled limited edition. So they weren't, they were like single, they were dyed for someone to use in classes and kits. And so they're, they're not colors that they sell typically. So you're not gonna find 
find the name on the pattern, but it gave me a great stash just to pull from for stitching where I wasn't trying to find like the exact floss that a designer used. But so this is my finished piece and it's looking a little wrinkly on camera, um, but it has been ironed. I, you know, the nerd marked this really badly and I find that fabric that's darker, the creases tend to show up more. I'm sure that light colored fabric is just as creased, but somehow the light on the dark fabric catches it. So you can see exactly where my nerd was. It's fine. Um, I had a feeling it was going to leave a mark, but I probably will only be using from within the middle of that anyway. And I haven't decided how I'm going to finish this. It would fit in a six by six frame, but I don't know that I want it framed because I don't know where I would put it, what I would do with it. Um, so this one may go not being FFO'd for a while. I may end up putting it on a project bag. Um, it would be really cute in a white frame though. <clears throat> I have a white frame that is six by six. So Maybe I'll frame it and use it frame for a while, and then when I get tired of it or have something else that I want to put in that spot, I'll take it out of the frame and put it on a project bag. I don't know. You'll see. You'll know when I know. Right now, I have no idea how I'm going to finish this one, but um, I think the thread. I think the fabric is 32 count. Yeah, it's looking like 32 count. And like I said, I have no idea what it was. It's a piece that was cut off and then I have just a quart Ziploc bag that's small pieces of fabric that are left. Um, this one I may have gotten in a D stash because this is bigger than what I would normally put in that bag. Normally what I put in that bag are size pieces that I would pull out to do an ornament on or like the Eda that I pulled out to put on the back of Bobbin. It was in that little bag. So it's pieces that I think I may use for finishing or for Christmas ornaments. So it's that kind of size of things. So this is bigger. I, this may have been in a D-stash collection, but really happy with that. Let me hold it up close one more time. The colors aren't showing through very well up close, but um, you can see my stitching anyway. <clears throat> and these are just long, long stitches for the um, dandelion. What the heck do you call those things? It's not the seeds itself. The seeds are, the seeds are down at the end. Those little, these little lines on the dandelion, they're just long stitches. <clears throat> so that is that one. This next one, I'm doing this for a smalls exchange and it's anything but small. Um, it is, I would rather be, B-E-E, -E, stitching from Primrose Cottage Stitches. This is the pattern. So if you did it the way they are showing it here, you see, you know, these are little sewing scissors. So you can tell what kind of size it is. It is a small. Um, but I have jumbo sized it and I did get some stitching done on this. I am doing this in the Quad 4 DMC and I have a lot done. So... I still have some to do. I've got a spool that's got to go over here and a pair of scissors. There's a uh, just a repeating motif that goes across the bottom. And then, oh, there's bee trail over here. So bee trail comes up. I was kind of all over the place on this, but it was because I was trying to get enough stitch that when I went to a quilting evening last week that I could take this in and, um, try it out against some bee prints in the quilt shop so that it gets, could get some fabric. I didn't end up buying any that way, but I do have the fabric now for this. So my plan is to make a tote bag um, with this on it. So this is on 16 count cream linen, or is it 20 count cork? So it's 16 or 20 and it's four over two. So it works out to eight or 10 stitches per inch. Um, even, even the 20 count, when you actually stitch it, it really is closer to 16 count. So it's about eight, eight stitches per inch. 
Um, but that's it up close jumbo sized. And this will be a tote bag that I'll use for a smalls exchange. And I'm hoping that will be okay because it's not less than five by five. But I recognize that part of what they're trying to do with that guideline of your small should be five by five is just so that, you know, one person isn't doing this huge elaborate thing and the next person's doing a little tiny thing just to kind of keep the stitch counts and amount of, and time invested in the stitching, you know, as cl reasonably close. So I have just taken my small and jumbo sized it and I hope that's okay. <clears throat> so this, I'm hoping I can finish this week. Um, I would like to finish this in early July. Either 4th of July weekend, well, 4th of July is middle of the week. I think it's Thursday, and I may take Friday off, so I'll have a long weekend. Either then or the following week, I have another open sew evening, um, and that might be a project. It's one I know I can get done during an open sew because I got my tote bag with a piece of stitching like that done at open sew. Um, this last thing I stitched on is Jardin Privé, ABC de la Brodeuse. This is the pattern. And I'm halfway through. I, I did, I'm down to here. So I have reached the halfway mark and I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to do this very bottom here. I'm going to stitch down to there and the WXYZ and then see how long this thing is. I may just take this snail right here because I love this snail and put the snail here between the X and the Y and make it a few inches shorter. This thing is long. Um, Mine's on 28 count, so it's 5.4 5 by 40.4. Um, yeah, it, it, it's big. It, it's very long. So I might actually be happy to cut a couple inches off so that it's only a yard. <clears throat> <clears throat> but here's where I got on this. Um, everything... From this blue stitching down is what I got done and I need to so the challenge with doing banding when it's this much well let me hold this closer first so that you can see there is some back stitch in there but it's not back stitch like back stitching around things which is what I think we all really hate it's it's back stitch like this um, tape measure over here um, and I love the little cat on the bolts of fabric <clears throat> um, this is 28 count banding and I got it at Needlework Galleria when I was there a couple years ago and this is the this is from I can't think of her name she sells banding that's imported from Germany and what she has now is the last of the banding that will be she was sharing with us at Needlework Extravaganza that the company that makes this had been in business for 500 years. The looms are 500 years old. And in flooding recently in Germany, the looms were damaged and they can't be repaired. And so they are closing up shop and will no longer be in business. So whatever banding she has now is the last of the banding, which is really disappointing. It was hard to find banding that was wide enough for this piece. And... I could have just used linen and then finished it off on the back like my other bell pole, but I really wanted banding for this one. Um, so I'm happy that I did find this one I did, and now I have it as a piece of banding from this 500-year-old company that's out of business. But I do need to loosen it up, and <clears throat> because the stitching is only in this middle part, wrapping this much around the roller this middle part starts to build up more bulk. And so that's why you see it kind of looking like it's distorted over here. It's because as I roll around, um, this is tighter than the edges. So I have a few pieces of um, batting in here over on the edge to equalize that a little bit. And I need to, um, 
I need to put another piece of bedding in over on this side <clears throat> when I, I'll get ready to advance this. I had thought I was going to unroll this and show everybody like what it looks like so far, but I kind of want the surprise of unrolling it and seeing the whole thing all at once for myself. So that's why I didn't unroll this and I'll probably just keep showing what I've managed to do each time. So um, I do want to work on this some more over these next couple of weeks. This may be one that I work on um, throughout the year to see if I can get it finished because I really do love this one. And I know where I, what do, I want to hang it on a door and I know what door I want to use it on. So that was all, excuse me while I get a drink, that was all of my stitching that I got done. Um, but I did get some haul that I wanted to show. Oh, and I dyed some fabric. And I did some sewing. I got two more project bags finished. I needed a fall and a winter one that were not Halloween and not Christmas, so... This is my fall one. This fabric was out last year, I think. The, uh, it was either last year or the year before. I think it was last year. It's not this year. Um, but I love these pumpkins in sort of non-traditional um, Thanksgiving colors. And this is from the same line. The uh, binding is not. I think that's Lori Holt B Basics or one of her basic fabrics. So I got that finished. I had these finished a while ago, but I didn't have the binding finished. And then this is my winter, not Christmas one with the mittens and the winter trees. So I got these two finished, which reminds me, I prefer the, the project bags with the clear vinyl on the front. A lot of people prefer, I don't have one in here, and it's what I'm sewing a bunch of now, the ones that are all fabric and have the zipper. And one of the complaints people have about the vinyl is that if you put a photocopy in here, the photocopy can stick and leave black on your vinyl. Um, all you need to do is use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cotton swab. And, you know, it's easy to get the cotton swab inside, which is where the, the photocopy residue probably is. And it will come right off. And the, the alcohol won't damage your plastic and the alcohol, I mean, just let it, it evaporates in no time. It's not going to do anything to your stitching either. It's not like you're rubbing bleach or anything in there. And that black toner stuff will come right off. So if you have any bags that you think you've ruined with that, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, I prefer these over the project bags because these will stand up. So I have them lined on a shelf in a closet and um, they all stand up really nicely. The, the, other project bags are floppier and don't know. I make these with soft and stable, which is a foam um, kind of batting. It, it has some stability to it. And between that and the vinyl, these stand up really well. What I don't like about these, and it's partly just the size that I make, is that a Q-snap doesn't really fit in here. So I often have the Q-snap. Um, I do... 11 inch size. I, I do 8 by 11 a lot of times for Q-snap. That gives me the size that works the best for me. Just comfort holding and showing enough fabric that I can keep stitching without having to move it. And often 8 by 11, a full thing of whatever I'm stitching will fit in there. Um, but it, it would fit in here this way, but I can't get through this. I don't, the zipper's not quite wide enough. It's like half an inch too short. Um, so the other, the other size pouch, because typically they're this direction um, and your zipper's at the top, it's really easy to get the Q-snap to slide in there. So that's the advantage to those, but this is what I generally make for myself. Um, all right, the next thing, setup's not really working here for me today. I fooled around with fabric dyeing. So I have a bunch of fabric that I bought in de-stashes and sometimes it's a little musty smelling. Sometimes it may have come from someone who smoked in their home. Um, so you can find it really cheap on eBay or de-stash sites. 
and I've collected some that I just wanted to use to play around with experimenting with fabric dyeing. And I had some mixed results, so I was going to share that. I did also dye some, this is two different colors, but you can't really tell that on the screen, of course. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, this one is yellow ear. This one's yellow ear. This one's greener. Um, this was plain white Chanel, and it is a little mottled and looks very much like a um, lady dot um, Chanel. So I only did two pieces of that. I was dyeing some green to see if I wanted to use it either around my B or around one of them. One of the colors was actually one that I wanted to put around these, but my stitch piece came out too close to the edge of my little wood cutting board thing. And I didn't want to completely cover the wood with the Chanel. So I went with this and actually I'm happier with this anyway. I think it looks more polished than the Chanel. I'll use these for something though, but that was a success. Um, these next two pieces, these were, um, walnut shell crystals is what I use to dye these. Now, a bigger piece, let me grab a bigger piece of mat board here. <clears throat> um, This is a lot more modeled than what I generally like. Uh, but one thing I found was one side is more modely than the other. So my hand dyeing did something that I didn't expect. I will probably just use pieces of, the, pieces of this where it's not this real extreme modeling. And that, that's just me, that's my preference. I'm not a huge fan of the extreme modeling because I think it takes away from the actual stitching, which is what I've spent all my time on. This didn't take a lot of time. My whole kitchen looked like a lab experiment for a while. Um, this is another piece of walnut shells. This one, I had a little bit more in there. So this fabric is actually darker, but I had figured out what was causing the extreme, well, not that one. So what I found was doing the home dyeing, I would have it in some, you know, a colored dye water and kind of scrunched up. And then I would pour out the, the water, but I would leave it scrunched up. And you would think that, that any water and dye that was still in there would sink to the bottom and that everything on the bottom would be darker but the exact opposite happened. It's like the water wicked down and leaves the dye sitting on the top. And this happened, I used multiple different types of dyes. I used RIT, I used um, Dynaflow, which is a fabric, um, it's a dye that's intended to be used a little bit differently, but it works, it is a fabric dye. So I used RIT dye, I used Dynaflow, I used my tie dye dyes, which I've used and shown before. And I used the walnut shells and the same thing happened with all of them where it's like the water settled to the bottom and it left dye sitting on the very top. It was bizarre because the tops became darker than they were originally. Um, the first batch I had popped in the oven to dry and I thought it was something the oven was doing. So the next batch I just left sit there overnight to dry out and the same exact thing happened. So I've, I've got to figure that mystery out a little bit more, how to avoid that happening. It did not happen with Ada. So I dyed two pieces of light blue Ada. I want to do Lila's Ly Ly Studio Halloween Quakers, this pattern, which you've seen a ton of people stitch. I love this pattern, but I think it calls for murky, which is a picture of this plus. Uh, yes, it calls for murky. Um, I don't generally see murky looking like this. This has a lot of light in it. The murky that I only see is typically this blue, this blue and gray that's over on this side, but then it's almost a brown that's in there and I don't want a brown sky. So 
I wanted to dye my own thing for this and I want to do this on Ada. I like Quakers on Ada. And so this was my first attempt and, and I may end up using it, but I didn't intend to have these spots in here. And what happened was I had it in a big bowl uh, with gray dye. So this was blue fabric to start out. It, it was blue and I was just adding gray. And when I added the gray and when I was pulling it out, it wasn't as dark as what I wanted. And so I added a little bit more just using a pipette and putting some drops into the water. And in doing that, it left some funny spot things happened. Cool looking. Um, and I may use this for that pattern. I'll have to think about it. Um, and the other thing is sometimes the other side is not, yeah, this one went clear through, but the Ada didn't do this funny settling thing. So this is the second piece of it that I dyed also by adding gray. This is probably what I'm going to end up using for the Halloween Quaker. So it'll give me just a little bit, um, and I don't know, does that pattern have a moon? Uh, it does have a moon. I may have to look and see if there's a light spot in here that she would work in. Or, I don't know. We'll see. So Ada didn't do that settling, leave the top crinkles darker than everything else. That only happened to me with the linen. Um, this next piece is, it was some cream linen and I used like a tan, um, I think it was the tan from the tie dye kit. So this gave me some really mild modeling. I'm happy with this piece. This will definitely get used for something. And let me see if I can show these without this board because this is going to take forever with the dumb board. These next few were just some light blues. So the light colors I do find are a little bit easier. This one does have some of that that I was talking about where it's settled on the back. So you see a lot more modeling here on this side than on this side. Um, <clears throat> but I'm happy with all of these light blues. This one has really strong modeling on the back, but it doesn't have any on this side. Well, it's got one little streak over here. So looking at those reminds me, this is a little wrinkly. I had shown this product previously. It's by Magic, <clears throat> who also make starch and sizing, but they make this stuff called Quilting and Crafting Steamer Boost. And, you know, they say you spray it on, you let it soak in, and then um, you iron out wrinkles or creases faster. And I've heard that it works really well for that fold crease. When fabric comes off the bolt, it is folded in half and that crease is really nice, sharp and can be next to impossible to iron out. And I've heard that this does work on this. <clears throat> With dyeing, I found that even if I ironed it while it was still damp, it hadn't dried completely, it's still really wrinkly looking. I don't know how dyers get get the wrinkles out of fabric. The only thing I can think is that they're using like the iron presses and that they get much hotter than a home iron. I have good home irons with quilting and I can't get all the wrinkles out. So I've always hesitated to use this with my stitching. Well, always, I haven't had this that long. It really just, I just learned about it. I don't know, in the last six months. Um, but I decided to try it on a piece of this since this is just fabric that I've dyed myself. It's not fabric that I paid a fortune for. Um, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything more than if I just wet the fabric and ironed it. So I can't say I would recommend this product. So I did want to share that since I had shown it before. Um, this is another, another blue. I was trying to get some nice light blues for skies and these fabrics were a variety of 32 and 28 count linen and then there was 32 count Brittany and they were in these Zweigart um, for Bucilla. 
uh, packages, like hang tags from Michael's or I think Michael's was the price sticker on them, but I had bought a whole bundle of them on eBay. And so that's what I was using to do this. This is actually the Brittany that I mentioned, which is an even weave. I was trying to get some nice blues that would work for sky, kind of like uh, fabric by Stephanie's Nantucket Sky, which I need to buy some more of. This is one of my favorites, this lemony yellow. Um, the yellow modeling doesn't show up as much in person as it is on camera. But I like that lemony yellow. And this was one of my favorites. It was a lemony yellow, but there's actually some orange added into it. So it's a different tone of yellow than the one that I just showed. And this one would be really nice for some fall stitching. So this one has really heavy modeling. You know, for the right fall piece, I might like that. That just like screams fall leaves over there. And you can see the modeling doesn't show through on the other side of the fabric. I, I mean, it does a tiny bit. There's a little bit there, but not like this. But I really like this color. It's a, it's an orange and yellow mix, but heavier on the orange on this one. And this was a darker lemon yellow. It's really dark on this side. This is one of the fabrics where I realized what is happening on top here? And it is truly just on top because it's not even on this side of the fabric. Um, this one, no idea what I'm going to do with it. Uh, this is just pretty bad to me. It's not quite as modeled on this side, but the pink, I don't even know if I can call it pink. This color isn't exactly what I was going for. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that piece. My guess is, is it will take up room in my stash and I will never pull it to use it. So I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give some of these away. Um, I wanted to get some gray fabric, but the gray was one of the worst colors for doing that, um, that modeling thing. I actually had some gray that I did that I threw away. Um, because I thought I scorched it in the oven and now I realize it was just what the dye was doing. That's writ dye. So it did the same thing. This is a subtler, I'm getting down to the one, the bottom, I know what I'm down to. I'm down to the ones that were my disasters or what I saw as disasters. This hot pink, don't know what I will ever do with that. But you can see one side to the other it looks very different. I don't know, maybe I'll just put these on the freebie table somewhere. This is my least favorite. <laughs> no idea what I would even do with this. Um, I may end up just cutting, just using small pieces of it that don't have these crazy lines. Either that, or I may try just dyeing the whole thing dark. That's a possibility too. This is kind of an orangey red, which I tend, I like the blue, the reds that are more on the blue side than the orange side, but that's okay. And then these were, these were some small swatches that fell into the disaster category for the most part. There is a gray here. I like the way this came out with the gray. Um, these were some pieces I bought I bought a stash of fabric and in the stash of the fabric, there was also some partially finished stitched pieces and the patterns, um, but they were not pieces that I was ever going to finish and they weren't even stitched enough that you could like salvage part of it. It was kind of this weird cross country effect where there was funky just looking chunks of things done. And so those I cut up to use just for test pieces in the dyeing. This green is, the dye is actually the color of my shirt. So it's the dark, dark green. And this is how it was coming out on the linen. So that was a flop for me, but. So that was my fabric dyeing experiment. Like I said, my kitchen for a while looked more like a lab. I had pie plates and um, 
sorry, my work computer just chimed at me with the team's message and it's late here, so I'm not sure what that is. Um, I had pie plates sitting on every surface in the kitchen. It was, I am hoping later this year to get new kitchen counters. And so I really wanted to get this dyeing experiment done because I will not try dyeing on brand new kitchen counters. Although I will say I did get drips and drops of this dye on the Formica counters that are in there now and it wiped right up. But you know, if I got a brand new kitchen counter and dripped on it, it would stain it and I would have that drip there for the rest of my life. So um, that was why I was going ahead and playing with the dyeing. Um, a few things I wanted to show, I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So Hobby Lobby has some more clearance happening. And unfortunately, part of it looks like they may be selling out of even more of their cross stitch fabric. So I first got back into stitching two years ago, a little over two years ago, two and a half years ago. And at that time they had still rolls of linen and some pretty nice fabric. And then they clearanced out a lot of that. And now what they are clearancing out of was 16 and 18 count Leda, Hardanger and Lugana in the little square packages. Um, so I hope it doesn't mean that all they're gonna carry is 14 count Ada because I would occasionally grab uh, a higher count fabric there for a project but I mean if they do then it just means I'll only be buying it at Michael's which is okay too that's closest to me um but yeah so these these packages the uh the 18 count Ada is only 99 cents and it's priced 399 $3.99 and then the Hardanger is priced $4.49, but it was $1.12. So these are all like 75% off. And then the um, Lugana was only $1.24 a pack. So if you have a Michaels nearby, they have a bunch of clearance stuff. And that's what I'm sharing. So this was in the stitching aisle. And then also in the stitching aisle were um, little hangers. And these were only $0.62. Cents. And they even come with the screws. So... This would be really nice for a little finished hanging piece. You know, like even that, uh, what did I do with that? That dandelion thing. It's gotten buried over here somewhere. I can't find it now. But it's the right size. You know, if you stitch that and finish the back, it would hang on this little mini quilt hanger. And then there was a smaller one. This was also 62 cents. So something like um, my um, ABC de la Bordeaux, that band sampler that I was showing on the banding. That banding, I think, is a little bit too wide for this. Yeah, it is. This is a little bit too narrow, but a piece, a, a band sampler would be really nice hanging on this. And 62 cents. Who can beat it? And then they had these cute little needle minders for 69 cents. They're bee-themed. Um, those were in the same cross stitch section. Then I was in Hobby Lobby because I needed some, I was looking for some rickrack or something. What was it for? I don't remember now. Oh, I do know. It was for bags that I'm working on. That's why I can't remember because it's not something that's in here. It's something that's still in progress. I was looking for some rickrack for some bags that I was working on. And they have a lot of their trends on clearance. And I was just going to show a few here. I bought more, but um, $1.49 for three yards of this um, cording. And this would be really nice around a Christmas ornament. Um, it's cording that also has little silver beads twisted into it. But dollar forty nine for three yards, and then these three are all the same but different colors, and they were only seventy four cents. It is only two yards, but this is some woven. Um, you can probably see it the best on the teal color. They had teal, red, and white, um, and it looked like that may have been all they ever had were those three colors. It might have been 
black, or there might have been a space for black. But these would be, this is similar to what I have wrapped around here. It's the same kind of um, braided, it's not round. It does have a flat edge. That's why you can't see it as much this way because you're actually seeing the flat edge from this profile. Um, so this would be fantastic, again, for wrapping around ornaments, any kind of small. It could be attached even on pillow shaped things like this but um, super cheap. It's also, I think, 75% off. Uh, yep, 75% off is what it is. So um, I imagine knowing Hobby Lobby, they sell out of their word spreads pretty quickly and they sell out of their clearance, but good deals on fabric, trims, um, and a lot of other new clearance that I hadn't seen before and not, it's not like in the back where they dump clearance. It's just kind of out the aisles. So like the fabric and everything was still in the cross stitch fabric aisle. They had a lot of cross stitch kits, just their small kits. There wasn't really anything there that I wanted. Um, and they had a lot of other trims and laces and things. So some great clearance at Hobby Lobby. Um, that is everything. I did get my case creation stand. I'm still fooling around with it. So far, I'm happy. It's just, it moves and adjusts in so many different directions that it's going to take me a while, I think, to figure out like what angle and direction and length and just, it, it just, yeah, it goes every which way. And to figure out exactly the best, most comfortable position it's going to take me a while. I was playing around with it some even just holding the um, the scroll frame for the band sampler. So this is small. It's not heavy, but my hand will start to get numb if I stitch on this too long and I'm holding on to it. And so I had it in the case creation frame and I was really liking the stability. It didn't wobble at all and it didn't droop. So my wooden frame, if I clamped it in, say it's clamped over here, it would tend to want it just the weight of the scroll would drag it down. Maybe not one as small as this. I think it still would a little bit. Um, and the case creation really clamps and is sturdy. So I'm going to show that next time. And then I do have some haul that I bought. I got a trip into Baltimore to Stitching Post and Needle Craft Corner. And Needle Craft Corner, it was my first visit there. So I still have that stuff to show, but I'm at an hour. So I think I'm going to keep that for next time. Because um, we went flew through a lot of stuff here. So everybody, happy stitching. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for visiting. Bye.